Superfoods. With a name like that, they've got to be super good for you, and you should definitely be eating more of them, right? Let's talk about that. How's it going, guys? My name's Richie Kerwin, and today we're going to talk all about one of my least favorite nutrition buzzwords, superfoods. What are they, and do they actually live up to the buzz? As always, I want to point out that I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't eat. That's entirely your choice. I do, however, want to help you understand what the science behind superfoods is to help you make more informed choices. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to get really clear about superfoods is that there is no set definition for what a superfood actually is. In a very general sense, it's any food that is either high in a particular nutrient or nutrients or has some apparent health benefit. That means that as long as you market it from the right angle, you can call almost anything a superfood and nobody can really say that you're wrong. Oh, that food has a load of fiber and helps you poop better. It's a superfood. Oh, that food has a load of plant-based vitamin A and acts as an antioxidant. It's a superfood. And it's also called a carrot. Just remember that anytime someone refers to anything as a superfood. Because the description is so broad, there isn't a set list of superfoods. And if you look up superfoods online, it all depends on what's trending right now in the popularity charts, which is usually down to whatever people are talking about on social media at the moment. So why I'm gonna mention some common superfoods here, just to explain why some people think they're super, I'm definitely not going to name all of them. So forgive me if I forget to include your favorite. The first group of superfoods I'll mention are dark green leafy vegetables. These are vegetables like kale, chard, spinach, cabbage, and at a stretch, even broccoli. They're incredibly nutrient dense and loaded with fiber, folic acid, calcium, magnesium, iron, although they're not as bioavailable as the animal-based sources, meaning they're not absorbed as well. On top of that, many of them have been shown in some studies to have anti-inflammatory and even anti-cancer properties. Although the evidence for the effect in humans still needs a lot more research. That said, they have been associated with better cardiovascular health, lower risk of dementia, and even type two diabetes. The next group of superfoods, I'm gonna be doing this a lot by the way, I think worth mentioning are berries. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, all have a few common traits. They're very low in calories compared to other fruit, and they're very rich in a group of phytonutrients called polyphenols. These are pigments or the colors in fruit, and they have powerful anti-inflammatory properties and stimulate our bodies to increase the level of our own antioxidant enzymes. This means they're very good for brain and cardiovascular health. And it's not just plants that can be considered superfoods. Salmon, for example, is often called a superfood because of its high levels of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, especially EPA and DHA. People who have a higher intake of oily fish, like salmon, are known to have a lower risk of heart disease and better brain health as they get older. EPA is especially important for heart health due to its anti-inflammatory properties, and DHA is really important for brain health as it's found in large quantities in brain tissue. And just in case you thought all superfoods were completely unprocessed, dark chocolate also has a pretty good health reputation. In fact, dark chocolate, the darker the better, is loaded with polyphenols too, and other antioxidants, and a regular consumption of dark chocolate is associated with better heart health, lower blood pressure, and even better memory and mood. But then again, who's not gonna be happy if they're eating chocolate all the time? Remember though, dark chocolate is still really high in calories, so you don't need to eat loads to get the benefits. Now, the next food, which I personally consider to be one of the most overrated foods in both the nutrition and culinary worlds, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for saying this, is the avocado. Yes, it's loaded with loads of heart-healthy monounsaturated fat, fiber, and minerals like magnesium, but, and maybe it's just me, I'm just not that into them. I have never once ordered avocado toast, and I don't think I ever will. No judgment if you like it though. But yes, it is a good source of monounsaturated fat. Next up, chia seeds. Now, while all nuts and seeds have a lot of nutrients in common, like unsaturated fats that are really good for heart health, and fiber, which is good for gut health, chia seeds seem to be getting a lot of attention at the moment. That may be because they're high in omega-3 fatty acids that aren't that easy to find from other foods, and they have a lot of soluble fiber, hence why they're often used to make chia seed puddings. The fiber in some nuts and seeds seems to be really good at helping to control appetite too. In terms of super drinks, green tea seems to lead the pack. Tea in general is actually the main source of polyphenols in the UK diet. And these help to induce antioxidant enzyme systems in the body and may help to protect against some chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. 
In particular, green tea is high in epigallocatechin gallate, or EGCG, which in experiments in cells in test tubes seems to have a lot of beneficial effects, but we don't have enough evidence from human trials to say that for definite. That's one of the big issues with the so-called superfoods. A lot of the buzz around them comes from experiments in animals or in vitro experiments, where scientists test cells growing in a petri dish. While that kind of research is really important, it can't tell us if something actually has a beneficial effect in humans. That's why we need to be really careful interpreting research not done in humans. The last of the apparent superfoods I'll mention is turmeric. It's the spice that gives many curries their distinctive yellow color. It's been used as a culinary and medicinal herb for thousands of years, and it's being seen really, really frequently in scientific trials at the moment to test its supposed benefits. Those benefits seem to focus mostly around turmeric's anti-inflammatory effects, which seems to have some particular benefits for pain reduction, like in joint pain. Again, the evidence isn't totally conclusive as to how effective turmeric is, but it's definitely something worth keeping an eye on. Now, I know I may have come across a little negative talking about all these foods, but I want to say here that all of them can be amazing additions to your diet. It's just not a problem if you don't eat them. The issue with the term superfoods is that it almost gives the impression that it's something that you have to eat, or you can just focus on that food without really thinking about the overall quality of your diet. That helps people market a product and jack up the price a lot. Don't get me wrong, I think promoting fruit and vegetables and other nutrient dense foods is amazing and actually it's something that we definitely should be doing more. Just not if it excludes all the other amazing fruit and veg that we're used to. In my opinion, most whole foods can probably be considered superfoods. That's because they all have something valuable to contribute to the diet. Because most fruits and vegetables and spices are absolutely loaded with possibly thousands of bioactive chemicals. These could have many different potential benefits on our health. And that's why eating a varied diet of many different plant foods is a good idea. Even common foods have plenty of potential benefits to offer, like the antioxidant lycopene in tomatoes, or the fiber beta-glucan in oats or the protein, calcium, and probiotic bacteria in Greek yogurt. The greater variety of plant foods in our diet, the better. But don't get hung up just on the ones with a good marketing team. So, did this answer your superfood questions? As always, if you have any more, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for even more great evidence-based nutrition information.